we saw how to handle state mutation with monads. And now what we're seeing is handling errors with monads. So essentially our handle error function is just bind. It's telling us how to combine two effectful operations, where the effect here is, is not just the EFF struct, is really the idea behind uh, an exception, an error. The side effect is the error, right? So this idea is known as monads, this pattern of computation. And it's just generalizing assignment and control flow or, or sequence of one operation followed by the other, where the first operation you're assigning it to some variable. It's basically what we are abstracting, abstracting over. We, so I'm going to rephrase it. What monads are abstracting is the let operator, which is assigning a variable, saying I want to assign to x the evaluation of certain operation or a certain expression, and I want to continue with the expression 2. Right? So you have O1 and O2, you want to assign the result of evaluating O1 to a variable, and you want to make that variable x visible in O2, in the context of O2 is just a define with a little star. So there is also the underlying assumption that you want to have control over how to sequence these two operations from O1 to O2. You want to have control over that. So what I've showed you was in our last lesson, the control is to be able to perform mutation and now it's to be able to handle errors. So this was actually introduced by Philip Wadler, a notable scientist, computer scientist, uh, that has a lot of work in the Haskell programming language, a functional programming language, which is side effect free, at least in terms of uh, this, its type system. So it's, a, it's a, programming, a functional programming language, a very strong type system, is able to catch a lot of errors, beloved by researchers, has a lot of um, work put in by lots of researchers around the world. Philip Wadler introduced this notion of monads, which is, has a, had a huge impact in not just in the functional programming community, but also in other, um, other non-functional programming communities. So what I've shown you to, so far is just two ways of looking at monads. And given by two operators. The first one is bind, which is really, we saw in, the, in our last lesson was function bind, and here is called function handle er. And there's also the second operator, which is pure, which converts a pure value to a nomadic, monadic uh, value. So that is to say, how do I take something? Uh, so in our, in our previous example was that operator that would wrap something inside an EFF, something that does not produce an effect converts that into an effect. So it would just return. It's the base case of evaluation. You know, if you see a value, you just con you return an EFF that takes the state and the value. And what pure is, is doing in terms of errors is just returning the value itself. There's nothing to do, basically. So now what I want us to do is just copy paste the um, notation again. So for now, let's just ignore what this does or how it's implemented and now instead of writing this I want to write the code a bit more um, a bit less verbose so what I want to do is I want to do arg1 and I want to evaluate that and then arg2 I'm going to evaluate that. And finally, oops, I'm losing something. And 
finally. So what this do macro is doing is just calling the eval handle error internally and just hiding it just so that you can just see the assignments, right? So what I was saying is that a monadic expression is just allowing you to write code whenever something performs an assignment. So what this do is saying is giving you hiding behind the scenes your handle error. So let's see if this still runs. Yay, we still see FNF. Okay. So we still use the same macro. We, we have the same syntax or, or the syntax for the same pattern, but now it's in the context of errors rather than mutation. So in the next example, in the next video, what we're going to see is monadic list comprehension, which is yet another use case for monads.